Okay, hello and welcome to Stampscape's Friday Night Live. We're going to try to make know, about four, hopefully, quick and easy um, reflection cards. I say hopefully because I haven't done these constructions before and I'm kind of winging it a little bit because I have uh, some compositions in mind that I want to uh, oh try to realize here. Um, but I haven't done them before, so we'll see how long they take to do. Okay, so I have uh, the reflection card is just simply where we're making use of the folded format of a card base here and placing a piece of reflective foil in the lower section here. I'm going to be using gold on these ones. And then using whatever you want in this upper section right here so you get this reflected area down here, okay? And we can make use of this natural, you know, uh, opening and format of a card. And then when we look at it like this, we get this reflected area right down in here. Hello, Patty! So, let's talk about the concept of these, okay? So, this area right down here, because it's a reflection, represents um, usually water. It could be something like ice or something like that. I, you know, I, I, I doubt if anyone, I, I guess if someone had like a super shiny marble floor or something like that, that could represent, you know, the reflected area. If you have, I don't know, some kind of interior in here, some... Roman blocks or something like that, but generally this would be um, more uh, representative of, uh, you know, some sort of liquid type of, uh, you know, area down there, water specifically. Um, anyways, hello, Linda and Phyllis, good to see you. All right, so anyway, um, if this is the water down here, we can use whatever we want to reflect down in this area. So if we're going with a gold um, reflected area. I happen to think that works really well with warm toned um, top layers, okay? You know, things that we can reflect into that area there. So I have a piece of the vintage style of paper. It looks very weathered and uh, kind of warm in tone. Uh, by the way, these are all quarter page. And then I have some of the, uh, the vinyl, uh, printable vinyl um, holographic sticker papers here. And these look pretty good down here. When I first, you know, thought about something like this, I would be thinking more in terms of silver, but it does have those warm tones in there. You know, it has all the colors of the rainbows. You can see those yellows down there. So that looks pretty good. And then um, with these uh, metallics up top here, you also get the aspect of this lighting, this warm lighting reflecting back up into that area there. So it makes for a pretty dynamic composition. Um, here's the icy one. I don't. I, I won't be getting to all of these, but that looks pretty cool like that. You get a lot of um, kind of motion in that top area, and then of course it's reflecting down here. I love the wood grain paper in here. This natural, you know, warm tone of the wood grain paper like that looks really good with the gold. And uh, I don't know. I really like that com. Uh, combination there. Here's a piece of the uh, um, Deanna Tubb Cedillo uh, printed background paper. Um, that looks pretty cool down in that area, like so. Okay. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, you can go on and on. You can do your own background up here, just creating something out of, you know, a basic white um, piece of paper. I've used black up here and put like a, a dark moon to reflect down in this area down below and that was really uh, fun to do and I stamped my imagery in white ink. I tend to think that looks a little bit better with um, silver down below here but you know you can uh, do any kinds of things. You can put a, a gold moon up here. I think that would be really cool. Um, I thought about doing that and trying something. I'll do that in another time but I was thinking about taking a piece of gold cardstock, quarter page, of course, and then punching out a one inch hole in there and then placing, you know, this is a piece of silver cardstock, but placing the gold um, behind there like that. But I don't know. I don't know if that would reflect really well down in this lower area or not. And then I thought about stamping out something like my Lakeside Cove trees down here, but in gold ink. So it would be a gold ink, but 
it would be reflecting down here in gold down here. So it'd be kind of like gold and gold. And you're saying, well, why wouldn't you just, you know, use gold ink up here? The gold inks over black paper, they're not that, um, I don't know, the, the black shows through the gold inks most of the time. So uh, I guess you can also use, you know, the actual punch of the, you know, the round, you know, one inch punch up there and just paste that on here too. But um, I don't know. I don't know what would look better because you would you could kind of see the edge of a round punch as opposed to punching a hole in here and having a piece of this in the background. I don't know. I don't know what would work better. But those are all the different types of things you can kind of think about. But going back to the horizon right here, that's going to be where land or something like that starts and the water begins there. Sometimes people put the horizon line up this way, which looks okay as long as you have something here. So it looks like another body of water, but they don't really match because, um, you know, unless something up here is kind of metallic or holographic, you'll still have this little thing here. It's almost like there's a body of water and then it goes vertical and then there's another, you know, um, horizon line up that way. But again, it, it looks pretty good though. Um, so you can get away with that type of thing. Um, but in theory, you know, if you have a reflected area down there, that would be where the, um, you know, the water line would begin. Okay, so that being said, let's let's start off on a couple of these right here. Okay, so let's go with um, let's use this one. I want to I want to see what this looks like here. Okay, so when you're working on these separate components like this, I, I would really recommend not adhering these pieces onto the card base ahead of time, and then you know as we're stamping on this type of thing right here, you'd have to do a lot of masking off. And then the you know the inevitably you know that crease in there would kind of show so it's better to do these separately and then adhere them into the card base after you know the two separate components are already um, you know finished in, in terms of whatever techniques we're going to be using on them coloring stamping etc. Okay, so let's do something with this and we'll talk about the horizon. Okay, so on this one right here. The horizon line is right up here, right? Because this already represents water. So again, I mean, if someone stamped this like right here, okay, that would be the horizon. So you'd get this body of water like this, and then that other part of the water would come out like that. So what I do is I stamp this down here on that horizon like that, okay? All right, now this is the printable holographic sticker paper. We can just use just about any type of ink on that. Um, dye-based inks, Brilliance, stays on, and Versafine Claire right here. The Claire is going to take a little bit more time to dry, but it looks pretty good. It's, it's nice and black. Again, this is printable vinyl sticker paper. It's not holographic cardstock, okay? Holographic printable vinyl sticker paper. The Brilliance, to me, looks really good. The stays on sometimes if I don't ink it up enough, and stamp it on down there and I hold it, it like dries instantly on this printable vinyl. So my favorite is the Brilliance. So let me use that one for this piece right here. Again, it's not gonna be for every type of card. It just depends on what um, type of card stock you're using. So the Brilliance isn't necessarily specific to reflection cards, okay? It just depends on what you're util utilizing for that top section, you know. Um, that's going to be reflecting down into that lower, usually foil section. I don't know if anything else you can use down here, but there might be some other things that I just haven't thought about. Hello, Candy. No power. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll try to make it fast. Because I do want to get through, um, you know, uh, a, a, a few of uh, these. Well, I don't know, a few, maybe like three or four at least. Okay, so I'm not even really coloring this bottom section right here. And let's see here. Let's go about like so. I'll, cent I'll do it this centrally. Okay. And we have this. Okay, so again, that's the horizon. I don't really need that se section down there because that top portion is going to be reflected in that lower portion like that. Okay. 
And let's see, should I change scale here? Let's just do this. Let's just keep this really, really simple here. I stamp this one slightly higher just for a little bit of a scale difference. Well, I guess you can't even really tell. Uh, overlay, I'll try, I'll try to go a little bit higher with this one. So I still want it on the horizon, but if I get a little bit of that showing, that's not bad. Oops, I didn't ink it up enough. Let's just go again here. Okay, something like that. I'll fill in here a little bit, but this is how this looks right here. All right. Yeah, let's fill in that right there. Don't stamp it up too high. <laughs> a little bit more foreground. I'll offset that a little bit. Okay, there we go. Actually, that looks pretty good. I'm going to do that over here because I want to build up my trees a little bit more in that background. Or on the sides, I should say. Just for a little bit of a, you know, height difference from that central one. So go with something like this. All right. And now, uh, I have a lot of space up here for like a quote or something like that. Or I can put... I don't know, maybe I'll put some mountains in the background. Something like that might be interesting. But let's do this foreground in here. Okay, now the thing about, the thing that I think about, especially with um, horizon cards, like or uh, reflection cards, is that, do you see this area right here where this top portion reflects down in this lower section like that? I don't like these rectangular shards like that that aren't capturing that reflected area right down here so i like to block off these the left and right bottom corners right here with something okay now on this one i just usually like to repeat usually with a larger scale something that's going on in the background it's just you know it's it's like repetition of form so Oh, something like a larger tree would look good. Um, and see this right here, if I stamp this out right here, that's going to block off that shard of kind of missing reflected area down there. Okay. So on these types of papers like this, um, media that's going to be compatible with that type of unconventional stamping surface, okay? This is probably old for all of you guys. You've probably seen this a million times in the other videos, but uh, I don't know. I just wanted to do kind of a general, um, kind of more instructional basics uh, uh, reflection card um, video here. Linda's here. There was that reflection card. Uh, re 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 it was the reflection horizon card uh, challenge, right, Linda? Okay, so media that's going to be compatible foil. I'm using the stays on ink. Okay, I used to use the brilliance and then spray seal it, but uh, the stays on is just the easier way to go because I don't even need to spray seal it. Um, you know, after it's everything's been stamped out. Now, if I'm doing things like blocking out some of that foil with, uh, you know, white ink or something like that, it really has to, you know, be the brilliance ink that you use for that type of thing because the brilliance will dry on there. It just won't adhere, so you have to spray seal it. Okay, so um, stamp and hold a little bit on very non-porous styles of uh, surfaces that you're doing just so that you give that image and ink time to transfer to it on this type of foil like this sometimes if you stamp it down and you hold it down for the same amount of time that you're using uh for whatever card stocks traditional stamping services okay it transfers very quickly um, but on this sometimes when i when you lift off of a foil surface like this 
with a liquid medium, it works like a vacuum and it kind of, you lift off and it, there's a lot of ink still left on here. And then you look down here and it, you know, maybe, I don't know, you get a, like a 30% um, impression on there. In terms of the, uh, you know, how much ink transferred, okay. All right, so I'm stamping this also off the, uh, the bottom of the card. I mean, you can stamp this up here like this higher, okay. But I won't have anything going off the top because again, you're gonna have it going into that top portion, the, uh, the horizon, okay. I'm gonna stamp a little bit more of this one. I'm gonna go for three trees on this one. On this side right here, I only stamped out these right here, but I'm stamping out all of this right here just to kind of offset it a little bit, just so everything isn't quite so symmetrical, especially with this background. Fairly uniform, I stamped that like directly in the center of that one. Stamping, holding, it's not about pressure, you know, it's about just kind of, you know, adequate even pressure and then holding this down, allowing that stays on ink in this case to kind of set up a little bit. Sometimes it sets up too much and it's like dry and then you have to kind of peel this off with a little bit more force, but you can get really good impressions on there like that. And then, get is something like this right here and that th real three-dimensional aspect of it and again see this right here that reflected area i mean you can still see it in there but this really blocks off a lot more of it that way and it also gives you that um kind of depth uh within this space right here this one would have looked really good with some additional clouds or something like that up there with the brilliance uh, white ink. Um, but I want these ones to be really fast, but look at that right there. And look at this, it's yellow down here because I've used the gold one. I, 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 love, the sil I love the silver with this one too, but um, anyways, it's so dynamic too. And what's interesting is we're looking at this at an angle and this is, you know, this is like a mirrored version of what's going on at the top, but look at the different colors that are up top and down below like that. It's it's not exactly like a mirrored um, version of exactly what's going up there in this area because I think this light is kind of bouncing back and forth there. The images just in black are mirrored, you know, but not the... Um, the colors and the lighting of the uh, of the you know the two metallics working off of each other. So, and this is the type of thing too. When someone's opening this up, I love this kind of effect right here. Look at that! It almost looks like a time lapse of a sunrise or sunset or something like that in here. And again, you have if you're doing something like this, you have a lot of space up here for like your word stamp or something like that, um, and that would be kind of interesting. Okay, so um, right down in here, I like to stamp um, quote stamps because I think it looks like it's kind of floating on the water. Um, but let's just do a little kayaker here. This is the point in time where I just, now this is a really quick card right here, but um, I think, okay, don't, you know, don't slip with this one. When you're stamping on foils, just make sure that you're fairly decisive when you stamp your image like this and don't like move it around, you know what I mean? Because um, that foil there is pretty slippery. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was gonna slip with these big images, but sometimes with, if I'm using brilliance inks down there that are thicker and don't dry as fast as stays on, you can go down like that and you can feel, uh oh, I think I moved it, you know, like a micro you know, 32nd of an inch or something like that, but that'd be enough to smear it. That being said, Linda has instructed here us that the stays on um, cleaner will clean it right off your foil and then you can just restamp it. Or, you know, you might be able to use like an alcohol link to take it off, okay? If that happens to anyone. Okay, so 
uh, let's stamp out. Okay, now this is what I'm looking for too. I need to see where my reflected objects are reflecting down in this area. So if I had a tall tree right here going up like this high, you can see where it would reflect down in my lower area. See my finger down here? So if it came, like a reflection was going down here, you know, and it was in black, I don't want to stamp my little canoeist here or kayaker because they would be obscured because there would be this black object going right in here. So you just need to see um, kind of an ideal area. So I think anywhere, now this one, these are really short right here relative to the height of this paper right here. So I do have a lot of space right in here, but I'm thinking the ideal spot would be kind of like right around in here somewhere. So anywhere from like the tip of this tree right here and over in here. And that's especially true if you have like a, like a word stamp or something down here. A word stamp would be really, really cool here too, right down in here. Because again, it looks like it's, um, you have words kind of floating right on the, uh, the water. And I lo really love that effect. In this case, I don't know what, you, what color you would do that in. Maybe, I don't know, gold or something like that. The gold inks, though, um, are a little bit different usually than um, the cardstock. So it would probably stand out. All right, so see that? That's how that goes like that. And then we get this right here. So look at that. Someone's out kayaking in the morning. Yeah, oops. And you get that right here. Okay. So that's just a super... I almost call this like a reflection card base. So you can put whatever you want up here or just leave it just as is. But I would put some kind of a, oh, like a word stamp up there would be cool or, or I don't know, something up here, you know, that's a big open area, but I don't know, it doesn't look bad as is. And I would put some sort of like quote stamp here or something like that. Or if it's like a seasonal type of thing, you can put something there. If it's a birthday thing, then you'd put happy birthday out here, you know. Um, something like that. And then, I don't know, you can sign it right here. You can sign it on the back or something like that. You know, people ask, well, what do you do on the front of the card then? You know, well, some people call that like an inside out card. So anyway, all right. So there's my first one right there. Like I said, I'd probably, I'll add something to this, maybe a little cloud up here, you know, but I'll think about that one. But that's just your really basic card. So it, it, here's the thing, you know, sometimes I post it and people, if people haven't seen how this is done, I'll post a, like a photo of this right here, like, a, you know, on Facebook or something like that. And you went so, so many times, not in the Stampscapes group, but on other groups, and someone will see this and it just looks like, okay, I haven't seen that type of thing before. It looks really three-dimensional. And I get comments like, hey, I would, yeah, I, you know, I would love to be able to make a card like that someday. Or, oh, he makes it look so easy. This, this is like just stamping on top of that. Three impressions down here. You know, this is like three stamp thing right here. It just looks dynamic because, you know, of this formatting like this. You know, stamping that is super easy. And stamping this was like nothing here. So... Um, I think you get a lot of bang for your efforts <laughs> and buck maybe, you know, because, you know, whatever you have going up in here, if it's like an expensive holographic or something like, which this is not, you know, these uh, mirrored types of uh, foils are really inexpensive, you know, 60 sheets for full size sheets for, you know, less than $20. So was it 240 cards like that? Um, if you're doing quarter page. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more uh, complex than at least that one. That one's like super, super simple. I, I need to keep these together so I know which ones go together. Like I said, I'll, I'll uh, glue these in later. Okay, so let's see. Let's do something with, should I do something with this one? The Tubsidio. 
pre-printed card. I wanted to do something with, um, I'm trying to remember what I wanted to do. I think I wanted to do this scene right here, but flowing down into um, some water down below. Not exactly this one, but um, maybe a little bit of a warmer tone composition. It, I don't know, let me see here. So I wanted to get to that one for sure. Uh, I don't have, I, I think that would have been better with uh, this paper right here. Oh, what the heck, let's just do it here. Okay, so I'm going to do this little brook, or it's decent size here. And it's going to be, let me see how this would look here. Um, hmm. This might look better with uh, like a silver cardstock down here, right? I think it would. Let's not do that one. Let's do this with, oh, let's do that with this right here and this brook, you know, flowing down into this area right in here. Okay, so. Oh, Cynthia, happy Friday to you. All right, so let's go with this right here. Now this one's a little bit different because this is like a little stream flowing into this body of water down here, okay? So I'm just going to, uh, I'm gonna just aim for that right about like so. Okay, I don't want it way, I guess I could have it going way over here. All right. Okay, the, the ink that I've really come to like is this hybrid ink for um, my pre-printed papers. You know, the wood grain, the, the vintage, the Tubsidio ones. Now, I don't know if it's different from Brilliance. Um, yeah, the Brilliance is just a strictly is a traditional but water-based pigment ink, so I think maybe that media is a little bit more surface-oriented. Or this one's the hybrid, so maybe it's soaking into the paper more. Use whatever one will work for you. The stays on works on this paper too, just fine, okay? Okay, large stamp. I stand up when I stamp these, if you haven't seen me do that before. All right, so you get that. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, I know what I wanted to do too. I'll do that one on the next, do something on the next one with this gigantic tree right here. Um, I want to go with, where did they go? Oh, okay, here's another thing too. <laughs> if I'm doing some kind of subject matter up here, I want them a little bit lower on the horizon because see like this right here, these areas right here are reflecting stronger, you know, the closer to, you know, this, meeting point than up here. See my thumb up there is a little bit out of focus, but the more you go down here, the sharper it is, okay? So I need to stamp my little character right in here and let's give them a little bit more of a contrast with how about like a moon up here, okay? So I've done I've kind of done this one similar or a similar composition to this before but um okay let me do a writer I, I just have this writer on a um like a meadow or something like that in the last one okay so this is where they're going to be yeah let me go a little bit lower let's go right here and then let's do this okay and this white behind their head is going to be for um creating contrast okay so let's do that. Um, okay, my white brilliance ink. Oh, 
Um, in reflection cards, contrast in that upper area is um, pretty valuable because we're not dealing with like, you know, we're dealing with like this mirrored looking card stock, but it's not like a true mirror. It's pretty reflective, but it's not, I would say, it's not like super reflective, like an actual mirror, okay? So the more kind of clarity when it comes to silhouettes um, of objects, um, it reads better in that reflected area down below. Okay, so what I'm doing right here is I'm just trying to uh, create a little bit more contrast between what is going to be a silhouette, like this person's head here and that background, because this is already kind of diffused over in like a 50%, you know, tone or something like that. So don't have like hard light and dark up there anymore, you know, like this one, you know, that's really dark against something um, much lighter, okay? Not in some cases, now it's like purple against black, but you know, for the most part, you know, in most angles, it looks pretty, there's a lot of contrast, okay? So where there's not contrast in a reflection card, you can just make it, okay, yourself or create it in areas, you know, for whatever, readability uh, reasons. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna stamp over the top of that. I'm wondering if this one will stamp over that, or if I need to go with brilliance over brilliance. I'm gonna try this one right here. When you're stamping over the tops of other, you know, types of inks, um, kind of compatibility and uh, whatever it is, viscosity, thickness comes into play. Sometimes you want to stamp thicker over thick, okay, or thick on thick. Sometimes if it's like a thinning, like a dye-based ink, I don't think it's going to. You're, you'd stamp it into that, and then that white would kind of read through that um, thinner. Uh, medium. Okay, let's see. Hello, Bonnie. You're talking about me on another live last Saturday with a bunch of card makers. Oh, okay. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Hello, Jeannie. Thanks for the cards, Jeannie. I don't know, the cards, the scenes, you know, those are much bigger than cards. So, seems like everyone liked your stuff, which, you know, was no surprise, of course. Okay, so that did stamp out a little bit lighter like that. I think the brilliance would be a little bit more consistent, but you can see where that, you know, change in value happens right over the top of that. I'm just gonna fill that in with a little bit of black colored pencil that I'm gonna be using on here anyway. So you can see that like that being reflected right in there. I still need to fill in here with something, you know, to uh, get rid of that little um, edge like that. But here's the thing too. Okay, now see where this one's transitioning in reflection cards. Okay, this is transitioning right in here, this light area into this light area, okay? The thing that for me, I like to go kind of with a darker, area right in here in this transition zone okay i think it transitions more naturally into that area and plus you know when you're going down a slope like this it's it's not flat it's it's curved okay and i tend to think that would be darker down here in this area right in here because it's lighter up top like my fist right here and then you can see you know where it's going under here it's darker and I just think that dark on dark transition looks a little bit better. But I also will utilize um, some imagery in there. So let's go with, um, let's see, where's my reeds? Oh, I forgot about this too. I'm gonna use a little bit of additional texture with my little rocks in that reflected area. Hello, Julie, good to see you. Good evening in Ohio. 
Well, it's going to be about you stamping with the white ink. Oh. <laughs> uh, it was probably the brilliant thing then, right, Bonnie? Uh, oh, the might have been the white inks on the, the foils lately. Okay, let me see where my... Where did my reed stamp go? I cleaned up my desk to shoot a bunch of photos. And now I cannot find anything, or I can find some things. Oh. Um, never clean your, uh, your stamping area. <laughs> Here, I'll use my, uh, I'll use a cling version of one of the sets. Speaking of white ink, it looks like I used white ink on here the last time. Oh, I might have been using, the, this is what I was stamping a bunch of white ink on, uh, or with, recently. And I thought about just not cleaning that because I want to use it with black ink in this uh, um, live stream tonight. And I thought, eh, I'm going to pollute my black ink probably. And I'm glad I cleaned it off a lot because a lot of that white ink did come off. Um, which I wasn't sure if I needed to or not. Okay, so let's go back to the, the hybrid here. And I'm going to create this, um, you know, more of a, a stronger shoreline here with this. Or... I guess transition area, you know, like it's, well, you know, what you would see in, uh, you know, watery areas, you know, down next to the water, you get a lot of that growth. Okay. So I'm making that a little bit denser in some of these areas, just re with repeated and different angled impressions of this. See how this is really kind of building up like that. And this is like where this is like feeding down into this body of water, the pond or something like that. Or whatever it represents. Um, it could be just a, I don't know, kind of expanded area of a, of a stream or something like that too. But see this like that? And you get those areas reflecting right down into your water as well. Like so. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to put that um, I do have a larger versions of the reeds, but it's the Art Foamies version, and I don't want to use stays on ink on this, okay? So I'm going to use this one again, but maybe I'll just use a larger portion of it. Okay. All right. So this one is the thing. This one's the stamp I think I'm going to use for um, my little corner area blockouts, and then we'll start rendering this a little bit more and shading it. Okay. Not this one. <laughs> Just use the stays on. Okay. Remember, uh, something like a stays on on this type of foil. Um, don't try to go with like a memento or something like that on your foils. I don't know if it'll never dry. I don't know. It'll If it dries though, it'll never adhere. Okay. On, on the foil card stocks. Okay. There might be a, some other kind of like a printable gold foil that I'm un, unaware of or something like that. Sometimes when I, if when I don't do this for a while, I've mentioned this in other videos before, but sometimes when I haven't stamped on this type of foil before, I feel a little wonky. Like when I'm stamping it, it's like I'm kind of uh, skewing it a little bit more, but I seem to have the, the feel of it again. Maybe after all those foils I was doing recently, but sometimes I go like months without stamping on kind of like these types of reflective surfaces. 
uh, or not necessarily just reflective, but more of the um, uh, the non-porous, you know, surfaces. Okay, but see that right there? You get that, uh, that reflective area down there like so. It's usually at about the 45 degree angle that looks really good with these. When I go like this, you know, that's not really reflecting down there, but the ideal kind of angle is, you know, yeah, it's like somewhere like this. You know, just the way the card would open up anyway. Okay, now see this area down here like this, right on the water's edge and right on here? See, if I don't do this for a while, I kind of forget about this um, type of thing, but I like these little additional textures like in the water and I think it looks a little bit more, I don't know, maybe like realistic or something like that too, just to put some additional forms down here. So you get, I'm going to have those reeds reflecting down in here, but it's going to be the reflection. But when I stamp out like some of these little rocks, now these ones I can feel my, I'm slipping a little bit when stamping it. The smaller the image is, it's easier to do that. But if you, if I slip with a little rock like that, it's not really any big deal. See, it's like I, you know, perfectly kind of skewed it there. And see this right around here, but you know, usually like around the shore's edge, this is what I'm doing right here. Uh, let me see if I can get the angle so you can see it. See it right there. It looks, it look, those are really black, black impressions too. Okay. There we go. You can see it right up there. I'll put some of it down here as well, but right along the, you know, the water's edge, it's, it's probably shallower. So you can see kind of rocks in the water too. Or you can see down, you know, to the bottom of the, uh, you know, that body of water. I'm going for some lighter impressions like this too, um, you know, with the second or third impression. Let me see if let me see if I can get, show you guys what that looks like on there. Okay, see this? Yeah, see this right in here. It kind of carries the eye out a little bit. But let me see if I can show you this how this looks up top. Okay, if I get that at a certain angle, you can kind of see those rocks that are kind of in the water there. And um, they're a little bit stronger. I can see it here in person, but it's kind of hard to show you on this camera right here because I got different lighting in there. Uh, but it's right over here too. Here, here we go. Yeah, 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 here we go. There. Can you see that right there? Those rocks right in there? See, it looks a little bit more dimensional that way. Okay. All right, so let's create a little bit more um, dimension up here too. Maybe we'd stamp something out there, I'm not sure. But um, on this, it's going to be really simple. I mean, you can, you can add color to this too. Um, but I'm just going to start off with, I think a black pencil. It has that, you know, kind of that vintage feel to it. Or maybe here, I'll, I'll add in one brown. But again, I want to keep this really kind of simple here in terms of, uh, you know, these constructions here. Okay, so that's what I've said before with Jeannie. Yeah. I got to see Jeannie applying those. Um... Okay, so on here, I'm darkening in the darker areas right in here. So this is just, uh, I don't know, what is this? Burnt umber. I'm not using it because it's burnt umber. It was just, I grabbed whatever brown I saw first. Burnt umber was always one of those required um, colors in uh, like painting classes in uh, school. It was burnt umber, titanium white, sepia, uh, there was usually like two blues or something like that. You know, I don't know, a handful of other colors, but I always remembered the uh, those brownish tinged ones. Yeah, but I would like to, I want to see how Genie does those, uh, all that, you know, that, uh, that white paint work. <laughs> 
as expressionistic uh, applications of uh, of uh, media on there. Let's create a little bit of a kind of a, a horizon up here. Now, normally I would do that with uh, my like sedge filler or something like that, or this could be a snowy thing, so I'd use the snow texture. But I don't, I don't want to go look for it right now. It's probably in this pile right next to me, though. But see this right here? I'm just kind of coloring in objects that are already darker okay and that look at this right here how it's getting more that black as it dries it's getting a little bit more transparent so that white is showing through a little bit more so let's just go and darken it in a little bit more with this black colored pencil while i'm with the colored pencil here you might even be able to put some like use a color you know, like a pen or something oh, that looks pretty dark though Kind of blend it in a little bit more and this is pretty black right here on the horse but it looks like this colored pencil if i apply it, it the horse is getting a little bit stronger in terms of uh darkness let's see that right there okay so let's follow up with these applications of uh brown or what was that burnt burnt umber with some additional black but i'm just doing less black than i did with the brown so it kind of transitions a little bit more but this gives your objects and things like that a little bit more visual weight okay and then you you know so when you're drawing designs and we're doing um you know, making rubber stamps from you can't do there's no gray scale in it, you know, like a five percent gray. So you have to make it do it in dots, you know, with, with that stippling method if you're representing um uh you know different values. So this is the way that you go in uh with your inks or colored pencil, whatever type of meteor that you're doing. And the good thing about that is um, you can do it in whatever color scheme you're working on. So if this is like a blue tone scene in the winter or something like that on the snow, then you can use, instead of going with black and burnt umber for your shadow work, you can use just variations of blue. So, you, you, you know, the shadows are usually kind of, you know, the colors that are, um, you know, within the color scheme. So if it's a sunset type of thing, um, warm tones for your shadows, cool tones for, you know, whatever, uh, you know, a, a wintry scene like that. So you can see all the blue tones in here over that, like that. Okay, so since this is going to, going to be reflected too, it's, it's, it won't, doesn't have to influence you uh, your your coloring application a huge amount or anything like that, or maybe not at all. But since this is going to be reflected down here, I should probably check and see how this is reading down below like that. Okay, so you see how that water's edge like that. Okay, see this right down in here? It's still fairly light right here. And plus, this is also, I also have light reflecting off of this back up into here. So when I look at it like that, it might look kind of darker to me or something like that. But then when I get that light reflecting off there, it changes it a little bit. So that might influence me to go maybe a little bit darker on here or something like that. I mean, that's like the little minutia types of things though, you know. Okay, so right down in here, I want, like I said, I, I like that transition zone to be a little bit darker. So it got, it got darker just with the, the use of the reed stamp, but let's darken it in um, just with some additional pencil work here. 
or shading work. Okay, let's take a look here and see. All right. I always like checking it out like this, too. How is it going to look when someone kind of opens this up? And what is the effect like that, too? Okay, now see, this is in white up there, so that's standing out a little bit um, as an isolated uh, kind of degree of light in there. So I'm going to take this and I'll go to one of my favorite things to use these days is my um, uh, past white pastel pencil. So um, let's add a little bit of highlighting throughout here. We have our light source and we'll do a reflected light. So opposite right here, we've added the shadows down into the light. I mean, uh, the dark areas that are dark on the design already. And now on the areas that are light on here, like tops of rocks and tops of rocks down in the water. You can see this little slope right here on the water's edge. You can just go in here and highlights are just kind of in the opposite areas of those um, objects, okay? So this adds in a really kind of light application this pastel you know it's it's a it's just like soft pastel it's not a uh it's not a uh like an oil pastel which they probably there's probably oil pastel pencils but this is a this is a soft pastel like a dry pastel so what i'm doing here is i'm not just coloring in the whole um rock right here Okay, because it's already a certain tone, so I'm just putting the highlight, see like that, on the top of it, so it goes from light and then medium and dark like that. So it's light, medium, dark, light, medium, dark like that, okay? So just on the top sides of it. I mean, it's not a mistake. Oh my God, I've actually filled in the whole rocket. You know, it's not like that, but... If you add too much, you can always just kind of wipe it off because, again, these are just, you know, pastels. So, you know, it's powder, basically, that's on there. And you can take that off if you want to. So I usually just do a very light application at first. You don't have to fully realize, you know, that reflected light on everything. But see, I can look at it like this and think, OK, let's put a little bit more right around here. Or if you want to go <clears throat> a little bit lighter on a couple areas, you know, then you can just add it in accordingly. Like right here. Let me see if I can build that up a little bit more. Like that. So that's a little bit more reflective of more of that moonlight right there. I need this back one. Okay, and I'll, I'll spray seal this um, when I'm done as well, just to lock down these you know, these powdery, you know, types of pastel applications. And also what I'm doing with this, since we're doing a reflection card, we're creating a little bit more contrast. So I think this image right here in the forms might reflect a little bit more with additional contrast down in this area right here. Because after all, kind of the reflected, um, these reflection cards, you know, the big thing is like looking at what's kind of, you know, down here too. Now that I look at that, maybe that's a little bit too light. <laughs> See, remember, I have this light kind of reflecting back up in here. So I'm, you're getting that, it's like, you know, when we used to go surfing or something like that, you just get so sunburned because you have light coming from above and also below like that. But anyways, there we go with that. This would be a good place for a quote right out here too, I think. A quote stamp would be perfect, I think. And I've left room for it. A lot of times I don't leave room for my quotes, so it's like I only have like room for like a word stamp or something like that if I wanted to add that in there. But there you go like that, okay? If you want to see what... Uh, oh, you can also let's look at different combinations. Where did those other cards go? Fine. So, so this one right here... Um, 
you know, I paired, if you have joined in here, I paired this with this, okay, with stronger, you know, larger trees in the foreground right here. Oops. It's driving my camera a little bit nudge trying to find the uh, exposure. But you can see what this also looks like down here, just with some, you know, like cattails or something like that in the foreground. See those little rocks down in here? How those look kind of add to it all. It, that being said, I think I want to I want to add in a little bit of uh, those little tiny rocks while I remember to do that on this one. I'll do this really fast. Now on this one right here, um, that distant area represents something far more off in the distance, so I'm not going to put as many of these rocks in there. But I'll put some down in here too. Maybe this represents where this kayaker launched from or something like that, I don't know. But let's see what this looks like now with these little rock stones here. Yeah, see this little, these little textures like that kind of help out a little bit more uh, with the illusion, I think. I don't know if you can see them up there. Eh, I guess you can't see them up there as much because these darker trees are kind of just swallowing up those uh, reflected rocks that I put up there. So I put those rocks like right in there. But those trees up there are reflecting right down in there so we can't see them as much. Maybe we you know, you might be able to stamp out those rocks in white up there. I don't know. Something like that might be kind of interesting. Okay, so anyways, two down right there. Let me take a look at this one again though. Okay. Yeah, that white pastel pencil is really fun to use. Okay, let's try something else here. Let's try... Um, I was wondering about this one and if this one would look... We have those clouds right there, so I'm not quite sure what's up and what's down on this one. Um, I mean, it could be either. But I was doing, thinking about doing a swampy type of one. But maybe I'll use this background paper. I want to go for, uh, you know, like three completely different looking um, compositions here um, for this uh, live stream. Let's do this right here. Let's have, well, let me see what this would look like here. Let me get my bearings right here. Um, Okay, let me put that tree right in here. All right, I need my sedge, <clears throat> my sedge uh, filler stamp right here. Okay, so this is the Deanna Tubsidio pre-printed, one of the pre-printed background papers. And I'm gonna do, try to create some drama with a, like a gigantic <clears throat> tree in here. And then we'll hopefully have some of that, you know, reflecting really well down below here. Um, let's see how that goes. <laughs> All right, where's my sedge filler? Here's a larger grass stamp. Eh. Yeah, I still need my sedge, I think. <clears throat> All right. Oh, here we go. I know I saw that somewhere. Okay. So a little bit of a grassy texture right here. And I'm going to create this grassy slope right up in here. I'm trying to do think about it. If I want to do this more like <clears throat> a rule of thirds and have the slope kind of going slanted or something like that, uh, Genie would do that. <laughs> no one does angles like uh, Genie if she's on still. Okay, so let's see right here. Um, and I want to use a deer right in here somewhere. Where did that deer go? I pulled out some stamps ahead of time. Uh, 
Oh, here we go. Okay, I just need to figure out which way it's pointing. Okay, so I'm going to have this deer on this side. So I'm going to do the tree right in here. All right. I'm trying to think about how high I want the slope to be. Remember when I was saying earlier, <clears throat> the focal points are a little bit better to have them a little bit lower so that they have a stronger um, reflective area. Okay. So I'm going to put this grassy area fairly low right here. Let me let me use I'm going to use a couple um, grassy textures. Here. I'm going to use the, uh, the grass texture stamp right here. So I'll go with the uh, sedge filler up here for this, and then I'll use this stronger one down below. Because this has a little bit of darker area, and again, I like it to transition into a darker area down here. So this just changes scale a little bit. Looks like it's coming out towards us a little bit more. And then we're going to shade that in as well. Okay, switch up. And then let's go back to the reeds again. All right, so we have that. That almost looks like a scene already, you know, without doing too much. Uh, just because we're starting off with a lot of stuff, you know, kind of already happening in that pre-printed background. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Uh, let's see how this is looking. I need to get my bearings like this a little bit. Okay, and tree right here and that deer is going to look like this okay I can get that reflection down there enough all right let me stamp that tree all right let me see how much of this I'm going to be using it looks like I'm going to ink up to about right here I guess it's only like a halfway up I don't want to ink up like exactly to match up that because I don't want to stamp this out and it's like, oh my God, I, I missed that, you know, top section of the, the tree or something like that where I just didn't ink in. So, okay, so if I ink up there, that'll be sufficient. I was mentioning in a previous video, sometimes I can't tell on these art foamy stamps when I'm inking up in black if I've inked up enough. And not just in coverage, but um, but in the amount of ink. You want it, you know, built up enough on there. But since the art foamies are they're black, you know, you're, I'm putting black on black, I can't tell sometimes. Now I can tell on this one because I had white on there before, but you know. Um, when I'm, you know, inking up a clean stamp with black ink, I can't tell sometimes. Okay, now this bottom portion down here, this is going to be going into the grass. So I'm going to wipe off a little bit of this bottom portion of this um, trunk, just so that it stamps out a little bit lighter or not at all. And I guess I should check and see if that... Where did the deer go? Uh, does anyone see the deer? <laughs> I need to I, when I where I stamp this out, I just need to make sure that that deer can fit underneath this branch. Now I have smaller deers, and like I'll adjust if it's. Uh... I have no idea where that deer went. Oh, there it is. Okay, let me see.
Yeah, okay. In the meantime, this is like dry, right? All right, that, and wipe off a little bit. Okay. Like this, get a good, solid impression of it. Because after all, you want it to reflect down in that lower section nice and strong. Okay, like that. It needs a shadow down there, doesn't it? We'll anchor it down with shadow. It looks like this right here. Okay. And... Create a little bit more of a focal point. Everything's very symmetrical right now. So... Um, We'll make it a little bit less so with something out here on the side. So if this was pointing this way, I'd put I'd stamp it on this side and leading into the scene. But in this case, it's you know this side, so I'm going to have it on this side of the uh, the composition. And let's wipe off that bottom portion a little bit. I'm stamping a little bit lower than, you know, straight on the horizon, just because I wanted, you know, that reflection down here to be a slightly stronger. Okay. We have this right here. It's a fun little scene, I think. Um, I can almost do the exact same thing. I'll, I'll do this another, you know, when I put this together, because I think this is the same exact thing that I'm going to do for this scene as I did for that previous one, just with some of those reeds and rocks like that. I can probably put, well, yeah, that'll be about the same. I might put a few more rocks in here, though, for this one, but that'll be the basic thing. Okay, so let's anchor this down, and maybe I'll put some uh, things up here. Fault? I don't know, maybe some fault tones or something like that. Okay, so um, anyways, I overstamped here a little bit with that Art Foamies. Uh, going for that, uh, I don't know, whatever impression right there, but I'll fill it in with something. Okay, so on this one right here, um, we have these warmer tones like this. So let's use some similar colors like that. I guess that's roughly like that right there. So this will be my shadow work right here. It'll be mostly like these three colors. This is um, not that one right there. Here's that, uh, that dark brown. So something like that, just a transitioning um, value scale, kind of of those same colors that are you know, roughly already down there, okay? So let's anchor this into the scene slightly more. This is yellow right here, so I'm going to add in this orange. This. It does, I mean, it doesn't make sense right now because it's an orange, but I'm going to build up my color scheme through these lighter tones of whatever related, you know, colors to the to the background now if this you know color scheme up here carried through all the way down here i'd be using more of these uh whatever bluish you know whatever sea mist you know sea foam green types of colors you know right in there to add the shadows okay and while i'm doing this too i'm going to create a little bit more separation from the horizon to the sky like that too okay using the colors out of the, you know, in this case, you know, Diana's um, uh, her, her color scheme, okay? Okay, let's go like that. This one I just switched over to red from that, you know, kind of reddish-orange. 
You see where this is kind of like starting to anchor this tree down and it's like casting a shadow, same thing underneath that deer like that. Okay, and then I'll go to my brown and I'll stay a little bit more like the shadows like about this wide right here. Now, when I go darker, I'll stay within this area a little bit more. I, I'm not going to go out to the perimeter of that shadow. So the shadow is a little bit more interior. Um, the darker area of the shadow is a little bit more interior based within that, sh you know, the, that cast shadow like that. Okay. See that right there? So it seems like it, I feel like it looks like it's sitting in the scene a little bit more when you do these shadows like this. Because it kind of relates to the, the lighting more. Okay, a little bit darker right up here too. And then we have the darker area of the, um, uh, the grass texture wherever it went. The cleaner I make my desk, it seems like the, the harder it is to find stuff. Okay, here it is right here. I'm going to darken up these areas right in here with that same uh, whatever uh, shadow uh, scheme. So you're just going to go in there and reiterate that. Okay, see that right there? And then right at the base where um, whatever the slope meets the water. Again, I like to make that darker, you know, just like right in here. Okay, actually, I can go a little bit darker. Okay, so I'll just take this and we'll just darken this up a little bit. I'm transitioning, so I'm going like this, and then I'm going a little bit lighter like that. Okay, so it's darker to lighter like that. So you just spend a little bit more time like right at the base, and then just use a lighter touch as you transition up this way. So a little bit firmer, like this, with more repetition, and then I just I'm I'm just touching the page at this point in time and doing this type of thing. Let's transition a little bit from the edge to interior too. So I'll go a little bit darker on the edge. And then we'll go lighter in the middle. Maybe I should have done that with the previous one too. Because it kind of contains the scene a little. You know, I'm totally touching this right here and that black ink is still wet and I'm smearing it. I guess I inked up too much. Hmm. Well, let's see here. Um. I just saw the stamp of leaves. Where's my leaves stamp? Yeah, I'll find it somewhere. I'm going to do some like foreground leaves like coming over this, but let's go in here and let's add in some extra kind of, let's go with some warm kind of fall tones in there. It's not the season right now, but who cares? So let's go with something like this. I'm going to put in some uh, fall leaves on these bare, uh, bare limbs like that, and I'll get some of my smudge. I'll push some of my smudgies into the background a little bit more. Um, let's see, I'm looking at this right now on my monitor here. I can get a little bit darker, I think, in here. With the black, that was the uh, the dark brown I was doing most of the uh, that perimeter with. 
let's use the black. Again, not you know super strong uh, version of the black. I'm just doing it very lightly like that, but it'll be darker though. Okay, let me take a look at that here and see how that's going like that. Oh, it's pretty fun, I think, in terms of a color scheme. See, one of the things that it's kind of interesting using these pre-printed backgrounds. See, like that vibrancy of red right down there at the base. I, I never would have done that if I was just doing this just from scratch. But this is just utilizing kind of, you know, what you already um, have and going, you know, and going with it. So sometimes it can reveal some, you know, good ideas that you normally wouldn't do if you were starting from scratch doing this type of scene like that. So, um, it, you know, it gives you, you know, it gives me, I don't know, I guess some other ideas going forward as far as the utilization of um, some intensities of colors in this case like down in the slope or like that, but I think that looks pretty cool like that. Um, I don't know, it kind of gives it that deeper kind of radiated, um, I don't know, like a saturation or something like that. Okay, so let's go in. I'm going to add in some uh, fall foliage to some of these branches right here. And this is the, um, the three millimeter acrylic paint pen. Uh, you can use the extra fines too or something like that, but it, you know, for me, these ones just, when I'm doing like large areas, it just takes a lot less time. I think I smudged these ones over here right after I, uh, probably right soon after I stamped it. I don't think it's real smudgy anymore. Okay, now when I'm doing these paint pens here, um, when I'm doing kind of more transparent types of applications of color, dye-based inks, alcohol inks, um, colored pencils, colored pencils aren't as transparent as, uh, you know, those other inks, but, um, it's still a little bit translucent. If you put a white colored pencil over the, like a black paper, it's not going to be, you, you know, that black is going to show through it, you know, somewhat. Um, but when it comes to acrylic paint, I usually work from dark to light, okay? Because these acrylic paints are a little bit more um, opaque. They're closer to opaque than they are transparent, okay? So I like to... Um, work in reverse, you know, from, I don't know, whatever traditional stamping media, you know, because this is more like painting here. It, well, it is paint. All right, so there's the orange. Now, it would probably be a good idea if I also let this dry a little bit, but I'm not going to do that here. Okay, so this is the way I'm working right here. It's going from kind of dark to light, okay? So this is the next one. And you can see what I'm doing here too. Um, I guess I could do like a white and pink blossoms on there if it were something like a like a springtime blooming tree or something like that. But I'm just kind of staying with the color scheme that was already there inherently in the paper. So I don't know. I thought it would harmonize a little bit more having this kind of this fall uh, type of color scheme. Yeah, the bear tree looked cool too, you know, um, just as is. But I like the look of the, uh, you know, these uh, colored leaves, though, too, I think, the way it's coming out. It might be kind of interesting having these leaves uh, reflected in that water area, too. Maybe, I don't know. If it reads at all, we'll see if it does. It could give a little bit of shimmer to that um, 
reflective area. See this is how I'm kind of clustering my you know application of these dots too. So it kind of gives a little bit of a stronger density over some of these um, you know leaf, leafy areas. And then some of these you can put it in front of the uh, you know that trunk as well. Okay, now I'm getting fairly light with this now. Um, so I think I could put some of these. These could re this could represent some of these leaves that have fallen onto um, the surface down here, or it could just be you know areas of reflected light kind of shimmering on the uh, the meadow here, or whatever the slope. Okay, so you can see that kind of it's a little bit more shimmery. Uh, it changes the spirit of the lighting down there. I think it's. You know, I think it looked fine with, without it. It was kind of glowing, but now it's kind of glowing and shimmering too when you put these little uh, opaque highlights over things like that. You know, if it was blue tones in the snow, I'd use white um, as opposed to uh, like yellow. Hello, military mom. Good to see you. Uh, is the pastel white pencil like a chalk pencil? I, I guess it is, but it's, you know, instead of being chalk, it's, it's pastel. So it'd be like, I don't know, what, what are, I don't know, whatever those, what are those pan pastels that uh, people are using? Um, it has the consistency, I think. I, now, I used to use stick pastels, okay, like in school. Um, you know, it looked like a little stick of, you know, soft pastel. To me, it feels a little bit harder than those stick ones that were, you know, really... Um, um, they have a little, you know, pastels have a little bit of slightly different texture than, say, something like chalk, right? Um, they, I don't know. They they have a little bit more body to them, generally, okay? Uh, it's probably different from brand to brand, I'm sure. Okay, but the pastel pencil, to me, wherever it went, um, it feels it's probably a little bit harder um, than those super soft ones, just because it has to be in this format right here, you know, so when people are using them, um, it's just, it's just more stable, okay, but it's, it's closer to, you know, a stick dry white pastel than it is something like a pan chalk or something like that. It feels gritty though, too, um, to me. Why not from light to dark? Well, if I went from light to dark, then I'd be covering up all my shimmering little areas right here. So it, it'd be the same thing, Linda. Like, say I laid down these dots down here in light, and then I colored over them with a, in a, a, a red pencil, the dark brown pencil. I wouldn't be able to see that dimension over top. Now, you can go from light to dark, and then if you go over light again, you know, so you kind of be um, layering those um, values against one another, but I don't know if you can see it here, but see when I put yellow over that, orange is a little out of focus when I show it like that, but when I put that yellow over the orange, it gives me more, um, dimensional coming out, and that's where you, you know, we're taking advantage of opacity here. See like this shimmering little light down here? It's light over dark, so that it reads as like sh little shimmering little elements like that. And that's what that's where we're you know that's where we can take advantage again of opacity, you know when we're working with transparency, if we're applying it over the top of something, if you apply, like a, you know, if I took this light blue and added over the top of this darker blue alcohol ink, it's just going to look a little bit darker. It's not going to look light blue over dark. So that's where, you know opacity comes into play. Okay, let me see here. Always shake up your pen, your, your uh, paint pens really well. Okay, now this one's a little bit of like a tan. Um, I don't, I'm not going to put too much of this. There is that light in here. See, this color right here is kind of like that same color in there. 
So what we have is what we're saying is that lighting. This is all. This is the background. We can call it clouds or something like that, which it, which it is. You know, it's like mist in the air. Okay, but all of that in there, all of this in here and in the background, that's all light. You know, within a given space. Okay, so if you shine like any colored light over something else that object that it's shining on is going to be reflective of that lighting usually. Now we don't have to abide by this, you know, you know, when we're doing artwork or something like that, you know, I can do a nighttime scene and have, you know, if I wanted to, um, you know, in the cold of night, you know, if you want to do like green, brilliant grass down below, you know, and variations of green, uh, you, you know, what you can do that. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, it can be an oscillations, uh, oscillation of kind of reality and, I don't know, whatever, fantasy or something like that in here. Okay, so anyways, you see, can you see um, those lighter touches in there with that beige tone in here? It, on these leaves, there's these little kind of lighter dots like that. Now, again, if I had that underneath, and now if I was going back and applying like orange over the top of that, that wouldn't be shimmering out there. But you can you, you can do multiple layers, you know, you can kind of keep bringing something forward and then burying it a little bit. Or sometimes what I do is, as I'm adding these things in, um, what happens to me all the time is like, oh my God, I added way too much of that lighter tone. So it's standing out too much. So I'll just go back in with a darker one and I'll put a darker layer of additional dots right over the top of it to kind of bury it a little bit more and to um, obscure kind of my, you know, over eager kind of applications of things. And that happens all the time, you know, because I kind of go overboard a lot, uh, you know, which is a good thing to do. Um, because if you don't go overboard, you know, it's like, with too much stuff, a lot of times you, you'll never know kind of how far you should take something or what, whatever something's kind of the ideal. But, you know, in scenic stamping, you know, when you go overboard with some kind of application of anything, if you don't like it, you, know, you just you just kind of cover it up with something. You can cover it up with another object or something like that or put additional colors down to obscure it. I obscure my things in like white paint all the time, you know, uh, white, not white paint, but white pigment ink. It's like, oh, I don't, I, you know, I don't like what I did there. Brilliance white with the, you know, the cotton ball over the top of it, and I push it back, you know. Okay, but see, and then here's another thing. Like here, here's white over that. So these little bits right here are really, sh kind of like sparkly down in here, like so, like that. And let's take a look down below like that. Let me see something here. This one right down here. <laughs> now this is like minutiae. I wouldn't do that. So I don't like that one right there. So I'm going to take that out. So instead of like a little white dot, it's like a little, I don't know, whatever, orange dot right there. But see that right there? So I don't know, whatever. Uh, I'm looking at that tree up top there. If there's anything that I want to adjust with that. Did I go too far with a white pen? I don't know. Okay, now that white pen, you know, if you're ever doing this with these uh, types of uh, acrylic paint pens, if something looks a little bit too um, contrasty, oh my God, that white stands out too much, allow it to sit there because that, those little dots that down in there that are light against dark, those when they're when they dry, they get a little. They move more towards transparency. They're not going to become transparency, but I'm just saying that they're moving in that direction. So um, when they dry, just that paint looks, it'll look darker and more reflective of the color that's underneath them. I don't know if sometimes it might be mixing with some of the media that we've applied down there, or it just might become more see-through. Okay. Okay. So anyway. There's our third one. Let's take a look at and see where we are. So there's that one. There's this one right here. Now that one took a little bit more because I was using more technique on it. And this one right here was just like the pastel pencil, you know, and 
a little, you know, white pigment moon on there. But all the rest of it was just straight, you know, impression stamping. And then we have our holographic with the gold. Well, I really recommend a lot of um, combinations of media using this combination right here with the printable vinyl um, holographic paper and the gold foil down below. The silver foil looks cool too. It maybe would look more of like a cooler um, kind of winter scene or something like that. Maybe I'll do that on the next one here. Um, but I really love this combination right here because of all that kind of those patterns that are created um, with the use of two kind of reflective um, surfaces like that. And the, I, I think the warmth of this one kind of adds to that a little bit. So anyway, okay, so um, thanks to Deanne again for that, uh, you know, those cool background papers. That one, I really like this look right down in here, especially. That's my favorite part of this one. As soon as I started doing those little shimmering little touches like that, I really like that grassy area down below. Okay, so let's see. I also pulled out my sea turtles in case I wanted to do something with that. But here's this little ice skater right here. And I thought about doing another kind of ice skating one. Let me see here with this and this area like this. Now, again, maybe not the most ideal deal pairing with this up here. Let me see if I have another, just that. Um, oh, I have, there, here's silver. I got a piece of silver right here. Here we go. Okay, let's, let's do this one right here, okay? So let's do some trees right in here. And then I'll put some trees here in the foreground. I'm gonna have this little ice skater down here, kind of reflective in the moonlight. Someone told me recently, they said, hey, that could also, you know, those are stars up there, but those little things up there, that patterning can also be like snowflakes. And I thought, oh yeah, you're right. All right, so um, easy composition right here. Now let's go with the larger Lakeside Cove, okay? And yeah, let's central. Let's make that one central again. Okay, I'm going to use my Brilliance Black. Um, I think this will work just fine. The stays on works just fine. The Brilliance is just going to dry a little bit faster. And things on the printable vinyl do dry really fast because of that, whatever, that emulsion coating on the top of it. That makes it possible to even use that for a, you know, a printing type of surface. Oh yeah, um, I need to do my moon first on here. Okay, and it's because some of those trees on this might stamp over the top of my moon. So I'd rather just stamp over the top of the moon uh, with those trees than have to, you know, kind of maneuver this around, you know, pre-existing uh, trees in there. Okay, so this one's going to go fairly low. Let's, let me see right here. Okay, let me get my bearings here. This is the only type of thing you have to do with uh, these reflection cards, is if you have some kind of subject matter that's going to be down in this little area, then you got to do a little bit of planning, so... Um, Let's do that right around here instead of, I don't want it direct center. I'm gonna put this over here like this, okay. All right. Uh, Brilliance white. This is only the second time I'm gonna have some like little ice skater in a, I think, in, in a, in the moonlight. It's not in the moonlight, it's in the moon's reflection, actually, more specifically. 
It might be better on a darker background because this holographic's pretty light, but um, I don't know, I, I think it should look pretty fun. And it should be a really fast card to do too, if it comes out okay. All right, so see that moon reflected right down there? And let's take a look at the lakeside cove right here. Yeah, no problem. That's going to be well underneath there. Okay, I wasn't quite sure um, where that would go. Oh, well, if it's right here. Okay, those trees are going over there. That's right, I'm putting this more central. So see, I think those trees, right, that tree might go over the top of it right there. Or overlap the, overlap the moon a little bit. Is that correct? I think I might have, I think this is where, um, I didn't do that correctly. <laughs> See, if I put this right here, right, that is going to be reflected right down here, and that's where I want my little ice skater, so I'm moving this over accordingly like that, so the ice skater, the moon will be right here, this is going to be reflected down here, and I have that little ice skater right here. We're doing rule of the thirds. <laughs> We're changing up. I'm doing things a little bit more strategically with the, uh, the reflected, you know, like focal point in mind. So, uh, uh, Apparently that was like too much for my little brain. All right, filling this area in out to the side, like so, okay. And this is what it's looking like right here, okay. And that's, see, that's where I want my little um, ice skater, right over the top of that moon right there, okay. So that being said, when I do my foreground imagery right out here, don't cover up the reflection of that moon again. You know, I'll have that like a tree out this way. I mean, it could just be like that too, but I think that foreground imagery looks really good on these um, reflection cards. So let's go for the, uh, okay, let me get my, here, I'm going to put do this right here. Um... Okay, so that's not right, right around here. Okay, it's right there. Now, I don't know, I'll remember that, I guess. So let me see, when I'm stamping this out, like that. So at most, maybe two trees right here, okay? Stays on ink. Uh, maybe I should stamp out that skater so I can work around it, you know, so I'd see it on there too. I don't know. Okay. I think it was right there. Stamp and hold, allowing the ink to transfer. Okay. Yeah, I think that was really conservative. I barely stamped that into the scene. Okay, and I'll do some other trees down low like this. And then I'll go, you know, pretty bold with this application out here. So it'll, you know, it'll change the scale a little bit. So the largest thing that I've ever done was I, I tried a full page <laughs> reflection card. I think it was on the uh, the wood grain paper. I don't know. Was it in the live stream that I did that on? That was a little bit too extreme. These these um, 
reflection cards. I think they look really good. Um, my favorite ones are the kind of those longer kind of um, shorter, I think, like um, uh, slimline cards. I think those work really good. When you start getting, and the reflection cards, when you start getting too tall like this, that edge kind of, it, it's harder to obscure the edges where, you know, that top portion isn't reflecting in that area down below. So, um, I don't know. I, I just wanted to test it out though, then that one live stream. Okay, let's take a look again, because I got to see where that little character is going to go like that. But there you go like that. See, I like this too, where this is like, going up into here and it's in front of those reflections coming from that top portion like that down there so it kind of creates a little bit you know that stronger type of uh, kind of three-dimensional illusion right here okay so that little character is right going right here i mean naturally when i open it up more you know or less you know, it's not going to be in that moon, but kind of in that sweet spot right there. It's right here. Okay, so let me see. I have another size block somewhere around here. And I'll just use this one. Unless I can find it in two seconds. Uh, forget it. Okay, so that little scooter is going right there. So it's just... Where is it again? Okay, it's just to the right and up from that branch right there. Um just in general. So right around right there. So the head is going to go. Uh, I think I want that head to be right, right around right here. So just a little bit higher than this branch right here. So I think right there. Okay. So this is like, you know, it's like spotlighting something because it's like literally in that area of like an isolated spot, which I'm normally not doing. Um, but since that moon is right there and I'm putting the little figure right in that moon, that's, yeah, that's when you have to kind of, you know, I don't know, whatever, consider that type of thing. I'm normally not doing something so specific in like a, you know, a little tiny area, so... I don't think this is like, oh my God, this is like so hard. All right, but there they are right there. Okay. Kind of looks weird, you know, out of context right there. But if we put this right here, you know, and then they're on a lake like that. See like that. And you can do little tracks. Sometimes I did like little, um, like white, uh, like a white uh, paint pen. Here, I'll do that on here, you know, to, to represent kind of the uh, the tracks of the, uh, you know, the ice, you know, the blades right there. All right, let me see if I can do that here. Um, uh, if I don't get it in the first uh, go, uh, I'll just scratch it off. I think that's what I did before, too. Um... Where's my paint pen? Here we go. Or if you want it to, you can do, there's other ice skaters, you can put them somewhere and do like a, like, you know, figure eight or something like that on the ice. I guess it would have to be in perspective though. Okay. Hello, Angela. Verna, good to see you. I want to get some paper like that. Verna, you like the, uh, do you mean this one right here? Printable vinyl sticker paper. This one's in a, like a, this one comes in its own pack or you can get those packs, like four different patterns um, uh, of the printable vinyl sticker paper. Okay, let me see right here. I guess I should practice this, let me see. It 
So I want it kind of tapered off a little bit. I'm going to have to go over the tops of some of these trees right here too. Or a couple, yeah, tree top, but let's see. Okay, that's a little bit too harsh like that now. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to allow that to dry, and then I'm going to scrape off some of it, okay? Just to taper it because it's it's too heavy right now, but you can kind of see the... Uh, the idea like that. It looks too much like a like a jet stream. <laughs> it's supposed to be skating. It's not like on a, like a rocket, you know, boots or something like that. See that right there? Look how three-dimensional I think that looks right there. Okay, now this one doesn't look too like wintry, so we'll hit these areas right up in here. I'll use the same white paint pen too to put snow over the top of it. Oh, and um, I, I really need that stays on this white pigment, but I, if I use that like tiny rock stamp to stamp out white rocks on here, I think that would look really cool too. Okay, so let's see. Let's take this and let's put a little bit of a snowfall on the tops of these rocks right here. Okay, now this is another thing too. Um, if you've watched some of my other videos, sometimes I'd put this blocked out um, application of Brilliance ink down here. So it's like this little band of white pigment ink. And then I would stamp out my imagery over the top of that so I don't get this patterning of this showing through my rocks. But I just wanted to make these um, reflection cards like really, really, uh, you know, a lot more quick and easy. You know, I mean, not that that brilliance layer takes a long time or anything like that. It wouldn't in this case, you know, because like, there's just the, like, the small strip of, uh, you know, rocks down here. But um, again, I just wanted this to be like really easy um, versions of reflection cards here. Quicker and easier. Okay, so say um, right here, going with that whole idea if you've been on here for the uh this whole live stream here what i was talking about on the this right here so i was applying that white not over the entire rock right here but just this top portion right here okay and that was with the pastel pencil and that's the same thing going on right here with these rocks right here see this so I didn't put it over the whole thing, so I'm not coloring the whole rock. I'm just kind of doing that little highlight on the top portions of them like this. It's like they're catching the moonlight, or it could be snow on tops of those rocks. Um, you can do little highlights on the sides of your trees. And again, this would be a perfect spot up here, you know, whatever. Happy holidays, whatever. Um, up there and I think this would be a really good kind of real festive looking card okay so let's take a look and see how that looks we can see these um, how those highlights are reflecting down in that water like that with that little white paint pen on top see it looks a little bit more you know wintry like that and see these trees right down in here um, they're just black silhouettes like that so what I'm going to do on here now now it's really, everything is like dark down here. So this white pen is really going to stand out right here. But um, I'll put some of these little highlights on the sides. Here's my little trick here too. I'm putting the little highlights uh, on the trees on the right side of the card, on the left side of the trees right here. And these trees right here, I'll put a little bit more on the right side of the tree so it's kind of reiterating kind of that moonlight that moon is like right here so you can put them you know just right on the tops of these trees right here tree limbs tree tops whatever like that okay so that when you pair it with your light source now like that i don't know if you can see that right in here um you can see these trees are being a little bit more left side illuminated and these trees right here with that moon or light source 
to the right of them, they're a little bit more right side of limit. So it's one of those little subtle things, you know, you can do. Now I put some highlights on the sides of these trees up here, but um, you can see it a little bit under certain light. I don't know, maybe. I didn't add too much of it because of all this action going in the back, you know, a couple little white dots, you know, it almost doesn't stand out at all. But again, see that right there? Okay, now let me go and uh, adjust this, you know, little jet stream here a little bit. Um, you can take whatever, an X-Acto blade or something like that. It doesn't really have to be that much. Or you can just take a, like a paper towel and kind of rub it a little bit and you might be able to get some of that off. I have a scratch knife right here, but I'm just going to go in here like so and I'm just going to make this uh, little um, whatever tracks on the ice a little bit more uh, I don't know, whatever, delicate, I guess. It's like a tracks on the fresh ice. See, it's like, see, I kind of broke it up too. So it's not just this one solid kind of straight line. So I want to, yeah, here, I'll make it even more scratchy like that. All right. See that right there? So those lines, you know, it's not like a, you know, like a rocket pack anymore. Like that. But um, you can do the, you know, you use whatever paper up here, you know. This would look cool with like a, like a dark blue or a medium blue cardstock or something like that. Or like a blue foil. Did I do it before with a blue foil? I can't remember if I did it with a blue foil, but then stamped out my trees in like white ink over the top of that. That looked really cool having... The white reflected down here too um that would be a good way to go as well so hello vintage scrap scrap girl good to see you but anyways uh reflection card number four here that was pretty fast to do too okay but look how simple this is right here these two components right here i mean that looks kind of bizarre kind of on its own but two stamps down here with a few little, you know, dots. One stamp up top there with, you know, the white ink on top of that paper. But paired together, I mean, it makes for a pretty, you know, dynamic, you know, little construction right here and visual. So everything kind of, I don't know, gets kind of, I don't know, kind of multiplied because you have that reflective kind of, you know, kind of dynamic working in there. So um, what is it called? That parallax where, you know, this thing's rotating down here, but these things like rotate against those reflections much more, you know, in a much more extreme manner like that. And also with this, something like this, you get a little bit of that moon movement or something like that as someone's kind of opening up the card like that. And of course there's the, uh, you know, the uh, holographic nature of that. Okay, so if you just joined in too, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, I'll apply these. I'll lock them down with some uh, spray adhesive later. Okay, so this one is going to be the bottom portion. The top portion is this. What is it? Three stamps up top there like that. Look at that. I need to go. I went over the legs with my pastel pencil there. Okay, let me recolor that to another layer here. See, I went with that pastel pencil over the tops of the legs, so I'm just filling it in here with that black pencil again. So, okay, so three stamps up there. Um, reads and just some of those little tiny rocks down below like that. It's, I know it's hard to see, but I'll show you it in context here. Like that. And there's your reflection card like that. I like this on its own, just as a card, you know, we can mount it and things like that but i don't know that reflection area down there really adds to me quite a bit for relatively little effort you know just with this down here so but again you know i like this top portion too just as is but uh i don't know that little reflective area kind of adds a cool dynamic to it all right so the pre-printed paper and uh, if you just joined in too, I'm going to use this composition right here. I'm going to, 
you know, I'll re-stamp it on another piece of gold foil uh, for this one, but that's how I'm going to treat this area down below here with that. But I really like that, uh, those intense colors up there. And I, I don't know, I had fun with the, uh, the fall tones again. I miss doing those fall colors like that. <laughs> I've been doing all these winter types of things like that, but, uh, and then I did a few springs, but the fall tones are really fun, especially against that colored background like that, that has those fall colors in there. Um, like that, but you see that one looks like that, you know, when it's opened up. I think when people get these types of cards too, they, you know, they look at it like this, they kind of wiggle it around. Um, especially with the holographics too, that are really changing like that. But this one changes that, you know, these reflections kind of, or these foreground images against those reflections. I love that um, aspect of it and how that looks on there. Okay, and the first card that was done, real simple, like Side Cove, you know, it's basically the same one I did, you know, without the moon here, but I mean, you could. Um, you know, if I wanted that right here, uh, would it? See, I put, if I wanted this little kayaker, if I wanted to change this from something like, I don't know if that's day or whatever, but if I wanted that kayaker against the moon, then I would just figure out where it is. So see right here, I see that, watch that kayaker. Here's where the moon would have to be. If I wanted this kayaker, you know, rowing across that moon's reflection. And I think that would be kind of interesting. So anyways, yeah, easy reflection cards. And you can't get too much easier than this right here. Just a few impressions of the Lakeside uh, Cove right up top there. Pines and rocks, left and right. I added these little pebbles down there, but the kayaker right in here. And again, I mean, it's a simple card um, like that. So I both get kind of a little bit frustrated at times when I post something like this and someone says that they would never be able to do that. <laughs> but on the other hand, they're saying, hey, that looks like such a great complex card. They think it's, you know, beyond uh, whatever their capabilities with that, you know, which you don't want to post a card and say, oh my God, that, you know, yeah, that card, uh, you know, that boy, how simple that looks. You know, <laughs> or how easy it looks, you know what I mean? Uh, I guess we wouldn't want that, you know. My gosh, you know, that must have taken you, like, at maximum, like, 30 seconds to do? I guess, you know, you don't want that response either. So, but they are easy to do just as long as someone uses the compatible media. So the things where people are running into problems, I, I mention this a lot because I, I run into it uh, from time to time is, now people might look at this and not have seen the video or, or seen the list of uh, products used, but it, the, where they run into problems is where they take like a foil like this and they say, hey, I used my uh, black ink on there and it just, you know, I was struggling and struggling with it and then I'll say, well, what black ink did you use? And they'll say Memento, which is a dye-based ink, right? And it's just never going to dry on here, okay? Or something like that. They'll try something of that sort. So these are kind of, you know, like, like I said, you know, I always say these are unconventional um, types of stamping surfaces, so I totally get it. And, uh, you know, outside of a, you know, a... Uh, a video or instructional video or something like that. They'll just, you know, they'll try their different media on here, or I'll use this, which you can use, you know, a dye-based ink on there. Okay. And that might be the printable sticker paper, but then there might be another scene where I've used, you know, holographic cardstock right here. They look exactly the same, especially in a photograph, you know, a, a video that I posted, but this is a holographic cardstock and this one's the holographic printable vinyl sticker paper, okay? This one has emulsion on it, this one does not. So on something like this, Brilliant Sinker stays on, you know, Brilliant Sinker, you just gotta lock it down, so. But otherwise, these things are like super simple to do. You just have to know, um, the ink compatibilities with, you know, those specific surfaces like that, you know, now something like this, you know, it's not, you know, 
specific to uh, you don't have to use uh, specific types of media on it just in general it is a pre-printed paper so um, but just about anything would you know print on this type of cardstock right here so um, just as long as you're doing the right stuff with the foils <laughs> Pretty much, you know, this one again took like printable vinyls take just about anything. Okay. But when doing the foils, just, you know, just be aware of that, uh, you know, using the right type of stuff and it's like super easy to do. And here's the thing about these um, uh, reflection cards as well. Um, kind of the more simple you have it up here, um, the better, because when I've gone with kind of more complex types of uh, um, compositions up top here, there wasn't enough of that contrast between um, objects and the surrounding areas because it would just get filled in. So this whole area down here just, it looks a little bit cluttered. So um, kind of going a little bit more minimal up top, I think makes for a more effective use of that reflection kind of aspect of these, you know, these constructions like this. So that, that makes it easier for us <laughs> if we're doing them, you know. So like right here, nothing over the over in this area because I want that silhouette of this character, you know, reflecting down there well. See, like if I had too much stuff going on over here, that's going to fill in this area a little bit too much. And then we won't be able to see these like reeds, you know, in the foreground right here, reflecting off that back area like that. I think a quote stamp up here would be cool though, you know, something like that. Um, yeah. All right, so anyways, some quick and easy reflection cards. This one's always fun like this. I like that spotlit little character down there in that uh, moonlight. It's a little bit light around here, you know, and it would be much more dramatic if this was like a darker thing, but I. I I did another video where um, we did that, and I think I stamped those, you know, the uh, the trees in uh, white. I it was I think it was white, and I think I used just black up here with you know a white moon or something like that, you know, so it would really make the uh, the character stand out against that uh, spotlit area like that. But the you know stuff like that's really fun like that. So instead of just this being you know a moon. Uh, you know, uh, you could do just a scene that looks like this where, you know, the reflection down here and then you would use this moon again down here, okay, in white ink. I'm talking about if this was like a half page you know, scene right here, just on one type of paper, not switching to the foil down here. But if you're stamping this little character right over the top of something, you don't have that movement of that character against that lit area so that's where the uh you know this uh reflection card comes into play too you know uh in creating that kind of dimension like that so anyway fun stuff if you haven't tried these i would definitely give it a shot at some point in time uh yes your new year's resolution <laughs> and uh there's also the horizon cards too so the horizon cards is where are where you're just instead of um, stamping out um, or utilizing the foil down below, you're just, you know, creating a scene down here and then this area up here represents the horizon. So you might put, uh, you know, lakeside types of things down here or something like that in this case. And this place up here might represent, I don't know, whatever, the sky or something like that or vertical trees or something of that sort. Um, yeah, and those are really fun to do, too. All right. Anyway, thanks for joining in. Uh, happy reflections to you all. Drop me a note in the comment section or send me an email if you're ever utilizing any of these kind of funky types of things. Um, and if you're, especially if you're running into any kind of problems too, I was just telling uh, this to a, a new customer um, today, but I was saying she wants to get, you know, some of the, uh, the uh, holographic paper. That's her next thing. So I just told her, Hey, if you ever run into any problems, just drop me a note because we can solve the issue like in one minute. And it, it's usually a, an ink type of, um, issue or something like that, ink compatibility um, issues. So 
we'll, uh, you know, we can, we can get that all solved like in a minute or something like that. Some people say, oh, I got, I got so frustrated, you know, because they tried and tried and tried with the same ink on that type of paper, but, uh, you know, just switch up to a, a, you know, a different type of ink. And usually it's the type of ink they already have in their um, thing. So I'll just say, hey, do you have stays on? And they say, yeah, you know, I haven't used it in 15 years, whatever. And I say, use that one instead on your foil or something like that. Give it a try, Barbara Joe. Uh, the gold or the silver, uh, you know, mirrored cardstock. Some people already have that too in their, uh, their supplies. They might have, uh, you know, some sheets of that already. So... Um, a lot of times they're not stamping on it. They, they, you know, they were matting things with it or using their Cricut on it to cut out different things. But uh, yeah, pull out some of those different card stocks like that. And uh, I don't know, just pair it up, you know. And uh, it makes it really, really fun to see those things come together too. Um, I've mentioned this in the past too, but one person, a uh, customer that I have, she sells cards, okay? And uh, she took that... Uh, I don't know if I had a, I might have had a reflection card class or something like that, but she, she started selling her reflection cards. And um, her comment was, was that when she had her one sale that she went to, you know, she said some customers, they bought like all four versions of her car, her reflection cards. And she said, because they wanted to, her, their um, common response was they wanted to see what they would what they did you know because she saw you know she showed them one you know so it it almost feels like you're buying like it's almost like a pop-up card in some ways it's not you know it's not doing anything but she might have thrown the uh, the holographic up there in one of them or something like that but they but they really do feel like they're kind of there's movement to them or something like that or they're popping up you know and that reflection kind of you know it's like an action or something like that that the card's doing. So it's like a, I don't know, it's like a card in motion or something like that uh, without having to do any of those conventional three-dimensional types of um, applications that people do, which I love, you know, on cards. But, you know, you're cutting out things and stuff like that, you know, for those three-dimensional things, you know, to make them pop up. Like I said, I love those types of things, but you get kind of that same type of three-dimensional effect without having to do any of that. You're just throwing that mirrored cardstock down below here for the, you know, for that reflected purpose. And, uh, I don't know, it makes it nice and easy. All right, see ya. Have a good night, uh, you too, uh, Cynthia. And uh, for anyone else that's joining in or watching on replay, I hope you enjoy the cards and uh, hope you have a great rest of evening.